All right. God bless you on today. Amen. That's all right. Go ahead. That's okay. Well, will all of the fathers in the church stand? This is Father's Day. Will all the fathers stand? Come on, come on, come on. God bless the fathers. We appreciate you. This, in fact, is Father's Day. You may be seated. Uh, we're glad to have you uh, on today. And if you're a man and you're not a father, we're glad for you too uh, because you could be somebody's spiritual father. Amen. 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 Praise God. But if you're not a father, don't get in a hurry. Praise God. Amen. Just go ahead and relax with it. It'll be all right. I'm going to um, thank God for the song selection that we heard from both the uh, praise team and the choir, the music department. Let's praise God for the music department. Aren't you glad to have a group of people who can bring their best to you each Sunday? Is that brother right back there? God bless you, sir. It's good to see you and having a part of what we're doing today. Thank you so much. It's all right. All right. I'm going to a word of God that is familiar with all of us. My approach today is going to be in one area, although I may emphasize some of that which has been emphasized in uh, the past. But I want to bring yet another thought to us as we go through it since this is Father's Day. It's going to sound like that I am going to preach an evangelical message that is as it relates to evangelism, but I am going to be speaking as it relates to this particular day, for this is in fact Father's Day. 15th chapter of St. Luke. And the 11th verse, we're coming from that scripture. And we're going to read a few of the verses which follow. And he said, he having reference to Jesus, and Jesus said, a certain man, when he speaks concerning a certain man, he's getting ready to talk to us about a parable because he is not describing who the man is. He's only making reference to a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, we do understand that a parable has some uh, uh, resemblance of truth to it as though it may have happened and it could happen. It does not normally mean that it did happen. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And I want to stop right there and we will address scriptures beyond that. But I want to stop right there. And I want to say that a young man comes to his father and he asks of a portion of goods that falleth or belong to him. Falleth means that he's part of his inheritance. He's to receive X things. And the father responded to him by not just giving him parts thereof, but he divided unto them his living. That which uh, he had garnered, that for which he was responsible, he divided unto them, not him. So often when we preach this message about the prodigal son, we say he gave to him, but truth of the matter is he gave to them. Both of them 
uh, had what it was to come to them. Now, in the Jewish culture, the oldest son received the greatest amount of that which was to be divided. And then it depends upon whether there was a second or third or fourth son. In this particular case, there were two sons. And so the oldest son got the larger or largest share, and the younger son got the next. And he divided. Now, whether or not he gave physically to the older son or not, uh, that is a matter of discussion. But we do know he gave to the younger son uh, that which he had and asked of because the younger son, upon receiving his, went to a far country. Now, the far country is not described. However, one has to believe that somewhere in the mix that the two sons had traveled before and they both had gone to a far country. And they saw things there that intrigued them. And the younger son was so inspired of what he saw, he wanted to go back again. He wanted to see things that he had not seen before. And he wanted to experience things he had not experienced before. And to involve himself in things with which he had not been involved, but he was excited about the opportunity to receive of his father those things that belong to him. And the Bible teaches us that he went to this far country and when he got there, he wasted his substance with riotous living. I don't want you to fixate on the prodigal, although I will address him. But I want you to think about the father. Because this story of the parable is more about the father than it is about the son. Although we give more attention to the son than we do to the father. We have to understand that there is a father who's quite successful. A father who has provided not only for his two sons but all of his servants. A father who has exhibited love over a period of time. A father sensitive to his sons, a father who was interested in the future of his sons, a father who was concerned about the advancement of his sons. And here comes a son who he loves, basically speaking to him and saying to him, Father, I want to leave you. I want to go where I have not been. I want to do what I have not done done. I want to involve myself in something that is different from what I have been involved in. I want to say to you today that that is an interesting thought because many people today want to do what they have not done and go where they have not been and involve themselves with people with whom they've had no interaction without an understanding of what lies ahead. If you don't know what is ahead, you need to be careful of your travel because you may end up in a place where you don't need to be doing something you don't need to do. And so the father listened to him and the father knew that the young man was to some extent selfish. He knew that the young man was interested not in the uh, provision and division of goods and substance to invest and to cause there to be more 
uh, for him than what he was receiving. But he knew that the young man wanted to go to a far country so that he could have some fun. He may not have thought about him wasting everything, but he knew that what he wanted to do was not because he was interested in the productivity that ultimately would have given to him an income wherein he would not have to work. Rather, he knew that the young man was interested in being out from under supervision uh, without having someone to tell him to come and go. But he also knew that there was something else uh, that was going on in his mind. And so uh, how many know when you become adventurous, you need to really contemplate the things of which you know nothing. You need to, you need to think about the darkness of your day. You need to think about uh, the turbulence that could be. You need to think about there might be something that not only that is strategic, but also something that might be tragic. You need to think about what might occur as a result of you wanting to do something that you have not done. Done. And I'm saying, fathers, when your sons come to you and talk to you about moving away from that with which they have been familiar, you see, we have a tendency to tire of things. It matters not how well those things may be. We want something different. We want something new. We want something that we think is more exciting. And you have to be careful because you don't want to get into the place where you don't appreciate where you are. Because often I'm saying to you that where you are is much better than where you want to go. I know the grass looks greener on the other side of the fence. But as soon as you get over, over there and trample on it, it's going to look the same way as the grass where you have been trampling all the time. So you have to be careful of what decisions that you make and the requests that you ask of others. This young man was not thinking well, and his father, his father, in my opinion, could have stepped up right here and could have said, although you are right, you do have inheritance, and I'm supposed to give you X things, but I'm going to monitor what I give you. Fathers, you must monitor your children. You must monitor your children. Ivan Turgenoff said in Fathers and Children, the book he wrote in Fathers and Children, he talked about the relationship between the father and the children and said that the time that he had with them when they were very young, he did not give to them that kind of attention that he should have. As a matter of fact, he did not develop the relationship that he should have. Fathers, those of you who have younger children, develop that relationship now. Don't wait until they're in their teens and in their 20s and 30s and try to establish it, but develop it right now. It's important that that is done. Be a part of their planning. Be a part of their decision making. Make sure that they understand that the wilderness is not a place that they need to be. They need to be in a place of understanding, comprehension, knowledge, and wisdom. They need to be in a place where that their thought processes of such that it will yield itself to their gain and not their loss. Too many young people are losers today, and we don't need to have losers. We need to have winners. We must teach our children how to win. Someone says, when does the teaching cease? As long as you have a child, you should teach. Well, my child is in his 40s. Teach. <laughs> you never cease being the father. You're 100 and your child is 77. 
you yet father. And you can teach something from that experience because the 77 year old has not reached a hundred. So he doesn't know, he doesn't know anything about living in, in the years of his eighties or his nineties. Oh, somebody's going to hear me here. Praise God. But if you get to be a hundred and, and, and your cognitive skills are where they're supposed to be and you're ambulatory, there is something that you can say to your child. And I know I got that right. So he goes out to this journey and he starts spending his money and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And here's an interesting thought. And when he had spent all, there arose a famine in the land, and he began to be in want. How many know it's a terrible thing to be in want? Particularly when you have had. Now, if you've been in want all your life, you think that's common. But if you've had and then you fall into want, it's not an enjoyable experience. He's in want. And so, so what he did, he, he went to a person and, and the scripture said he joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Jewish people don't deal with swine. But he's going there. And he's working in, with the swine. Some people said he was with the pigs or the hogs. And they said that he was, what do they call it, slopping pigs? Yeah, that's what they said. And so he was doing that. But the famine in the land caused him to have some problems because he obviously was not making enough money to have a bottle system where he could exchange what he was doing for food. And the scripture is quite clear in that. And it said, and he would have, fain have filled his belly. It didn't say he filled his belly. He would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. So it lets you know he didn't eat it. We teach it that he ate it, but the scripture doesn't say he ate it. He would have. One thing I love about God, as terrible as we are, he will speak to our spirit so that we can come to our sense. And the word says, and when he came to himself, he said, how many high servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. Had he eaten the husk, he wouldn't be hungry. So he didn't eat it. He's hungry. He says, my father's got some servant who have bread enough and to spare. I'm, my father's rich. I'm a son. Somebody's going to get it in a minute. My father is rich, and I am a son. He has servants, and they're doing better than I am. I've wasted my money, spent it all, but I yet have a father. I've wasted. Let me tell you something. Uh, he had women, yes, and he drank, yes. And he did a whole lot of stuff, yes. And he spent his money, yes. And I'm telling you that most of those things that we do outside of intelligence and spirituality don't last very long. If you don't pay attention to where you're going, you're going to get lost. And he got lost. What did he get lost? He got lost in selfishness. 
He got lost in greed. He got lost in ignorance. He got lost in playfulness. He was lost. But the word says he came to himself. And if you are in an errant situation, you need God to help you come to yourself. It's one thing to be out there, but it's another thing to come to yourself after having been. It's insanity to keep going in the same vicious cycle. But when you come to yourself, you stop. Let the big wheel keep on spinning, but you get off the big wheel. And so he came to himself. And he says, I'm going to talk to my dad. I'm going home to my father. Notice he says he's going home to his father. I'm not talking about land now. He's not talking about provision. He's not talking about substance. He says, I will arise and go to my father. Everything about me started with my father. And so I'm going to my father. Father, I'm saying to those of you in the body of Christ, everything about you has to do with your father. Everything about you has to be, has to do with God, our father. And so when you find yourself out there, wherever there may be, stop talking about cathedral of praise. Stop talking about any other church with which you are affiliated. When you want to go back home, say, I'm going back to God. I'm going back. I'm going to give my heart to God. I'm going to do all I can to have a connection, a relationship with him and make everything right with God. If you make everything right with God, everything will be right in other places. But don't try to fix it until you fix it with God. He says, I'm going to tell him I've sinned against heaven and before thee. I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Now notice he didn't say I want to be a hired servant, but as one. In other words, the hired servants had a place to stay. They had, a, had, had meals. <laughs> oh, yeah, they had clothes. Just make me as one. I don't want to be one, but make me as one. How you care for them, care for me. I don't have to be at the treatment of a son, but make me as a hired servant. How many know it's good to be around the fire? They may not have made the fire for you, but it's good to be around the fire that's made. How many know it's good to be in the company of those who do have? You may not have, but it's good to be in the company of those who do have. Praise God. I was not a politician. I was not all that high, but I was invited to the White House. And when I went in the White House, I was not a brother. I was not a cousin. I was not a nephew. I was none of those kinds of things, but I was an invited guest. And at the table where they sat and had breakfast, I sat right there with the president of the United States. And the same food they had, I ate. Uh, the same silver they I used, the crystal they had I used, the china they had I, I used, and, 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 and the linen that they had I used, and the chair, the kinds of quality of chairs they said I sat on. I was not a part of whatever they were, but I was invited. So he said, just let me get back to my father. Something about my father that's going to change things. <laughs> He's going to change things. So he thought about it, but how many know you just can't continue to think? You have to do something. Too many people are just thinking about what they ought to do. You have to do more than just think. You have to get up and do something. And so the Bible says he arose and came to his father. Let's talk about the father now because it's Father's Day. The father, when his son left, 
the father never stopped thinking about his son. The father never stopped looking out over his acreage to see his son coming. And as was his usual whole routine, he got up once again and went out and looked into the far distance. But something unusual happened on this day. He saw an image of a person coming his way. And there's something about the father, although the son had done something very terrible and probably looked bad from a distance, there's something about the father that he knew about the son. He knew the way he walked. Coming up the pathway, he knew his, you see, fathers, you need to know about your sons. You need to know the characteristics of your son. You need to know their personalities. You, you need to know their idiosyncrasies. You need to know all there is to know about them so that when they come and have need, you won't mistake them for somebody else, but you'll know your son. So the word says he ran out and fell upon his neck, which simply means he embraced him greatly. And he embraced him greatly because his son had come home. It matters not what a son may do. A father loves a son and a father wants a son to come home. I'm going to tell you that this parable is addressing itself to the body of Christ and our relationship with an almighty God. He's more than a God who is up in the heavens abstractly away from us. He is our father. And when we err in our ways, he waits for us to walk down the path toward coming back to him so that he can embrace us and bring us back to right fellowship. Don't stand out and say, I'm not going home. Lose that egotism. Come to the resolve that you messed up, and I'm going back to my father. It was with my father that I had everything. It was with my father that I enjoyed living. It was with my father that I was well taken care of. It was with my father, and I'm going back to my father. So the servants came. He said, listen, get a ring. That ring shows a never-ending relationship with the Father, one that's eternal. Get a robe. That robe address the righteousness and the right standing that he had with his Father. We get a robe, praise God. And that robe that we have is a robe of righteousness. Yeah, that God gives to us to let us know that we're in right standing. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, irrespective of what you think, right now, I'm in right standing with my heavenly Father. Jesus died on Calvary's cross for my sins, and because he did, his blood has washed away my sin, and right now, I've been reconciled with my father, and I'm glad to be home. Mm. Woo! Uh. So he put a ring on his finger, put a robe on him, and then he put some shoes on his feet. <laughs> ah, what a great father. 
because not yet in the conversation has his father said, now tell me all the bad things you did. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Here you come back home empty-handed. You're looking bad. You're looking terrible. He never addressed it. He never addressed it. He says, get these things and get a fatted calf. Talking about the father. Get the fatted calf, and I want you to fix up a real good meal because, because there is something that has happened that I've been wanting to have happen. My son, who was lost, is now found. My son, who was dead, not, 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 not physically in graveyard dead, but now he's alive. My son, who was blind in terms of comprehending things, he's no longer blind. He can see, and he has great understanding. And I want, I want to have a celebratory expression. I want us to celebrate him coming home. Let's make merry. And they were in there making merry and enjoying themselves. And the young man who was there, didn't leave the house, was right there, says, Dale, I want to know what, what, what's going on there. What's going? They said, you haven't heard? Your brother's back home. And he basically said, what? He's back home. And they were excited of him being back home. But the young man who stayed there was not excited because he had everything going from him, didn't have to worry about his brother being there at all. How many of you know that some people want you out of here? They think their life would be much better if you were gone. But I'm going to tell you something about God. God will never abandon you. You may walk away, but he's always reaching out to bring you back to your rightful place. And so he says he was angry and he wouldn't go in to the feast, but his father came out. And his father, knowing his spirit, he yet entreated him. And then when we get to that 29th verse, and he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. In other words, you never killed a calf for me. How many know that some of us get lost in that which amounts hardly to anything? Because we see somebody else get something small and minute, and we would rather have that than the main things that we need in life. Here's a man with a house. Here's a man with cattle. Here's a man with food. Any kind of robe he wanted, he could get. All kinds of shoes that he wanted, he could have. Everything, he already had his portion. And everything else that he wanted was right at his father's house, at his fingertips. But yet he's going to talk about not being invited to a dinner. What's more important, getting a cab, getting a kid, having a dinner, or having your life well planned and well provided for forever. You've got to understand how to prioritize. Father said, to talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. His father had something to say to him. Yeah, his father had something to say to him. He said to him, Son, now notice he didn't call them something crazy. He was acting crazy, but he didn't call him out of his name. He called him son. Fathers always respect their children. He called him son. Thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was me that we should make marriage. It was necessary that we should make merry and be glad for this thy brother. Don't get it twisted. He's still your brother. This thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. I'm going to tell you as I close, God is using this through Jesus as an example it is a parable, 
but it is church-oriented because as that father was to his lost son, so is God with us. I don't care who you are in here today and how your life has spun into something other than that, which is of the will of God, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. Oh, yes, he does. And he's concerned about you wherever you end up. You may be in the valley low, but he loves you. You may end up on a street corner, but he loves you. You may end up under the bridge, but he loves you. You may be in the house of prostitution, but he loves you. You may be some other place gambling all night, but he loves you. You may have walked away and don't come to church like you ought to, but he loves you. And all you need to do is say to yourself that my father is rich in houses and lands. He holds the wealth of the world in his hands of rubies and diamonds and silver and gold. His comforts are full. He has riches untold. And I don't care what you call me. You can call me a prostitute. You can call me a gambler. You can call me a midnight rambler. But I want to tell you who I really am. I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. Ooh. And when I get through doing whatever I'm doing, I'm going to my father. In my father's house, there is deliverance. In my father's house, there is mercy. In my father's house, there is understanding. In my father's house, there is compassion. In my father's house, there's economic security. In my father's house, there is love. In my father's house, there is mercy. I'm going home. And can you not see him with his arms stretched out, waiting for you, waiting for you, saying, come on home. If there's anybody backslidden today, he said, come on home. If there's anybody who's down in your spirit, he said, come on home. I've got a new robe for you, and I have a ring for you. I have some new shoes for you. Just come on home. Come to the fountain. Come to the fountain. Drink of the fountain without money and prize. Come to the fountain. Ye who are weary, I want you to come on. Everyone that's thirsty, I want you to come on. If you're tired, I want you to come on. Come, come, come. You can make a change in a moment's time. It doesn't take all day and it doesn't take all week. All you need to do is make up your mind. I'm going to my father's house. Yes. When I get there, I'm not going to worry about a mansion. I know the word said, in my father's house are many mansions, but I'm not going to worry about the mansion. I'm just going to concern myself about being clothed in righteousness. Woo. Is he writing something for me down there? I'm writing something for 
I got you, I got you, I got you. Woo! Your pastor, something in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's something else, isn't he? He's something else. I met him the other day and I found him to be something else. He's something else. But he's a good guy, though. He's a good, he's a good guy. I'm finished. If you got anything out of the mess, stand on your feet and give God some praise. Sometimes you need to be listening. And when you're listening, you need to hear God. Because God calls us. And you need to hear him when he calls. Yes, 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 yes. The master's calling. Guide me to your side. Yes, yes. Just listen while you still can hear. God is talking today. God is talking right now. God is talking to you now. The master's calling, the master's calling, the master's calling. Master's calling. While you have activity of your limbs, bow down while your knees still bend. The master's calling. He's calling you today, the Master's calling. I don't want to run and walk away. Come on. Walk away. Ooh. I don't want to run. Oh yes, oh yes. God, if you're in here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you say this is a great day, Father's Day, for me to say to God, I want you in my life, I want you in my heart. I'm saying to you right now, why don't you come from where you are, come down here to where I am, and why don't you make that spiritual connection with God Almighty? 
and say, Father, I'm coming home to you. You're responsible for all the things that are good in my life. And I want to come back to where you are. If you are a backslider, or if you've never known him as your personal savior, right now is a good time to give your heart to the Lord. I invite you to come to where I am right now. Come out of your pew area and walk down here to where I am. Come from your pew area and walk down here to where I am. And let the Lord do something great for you. Because God wants to do something while he's calling you. Why don't you hear what he has to say? You're never too old. You're never too young. You're always right chronology. In your chronology. Just come from where you are. Come on. Come on. Let God have his way in your life. That's what he wants. If you are part of God, you've already been with God. You know he loves you. You love him. But you say, Brother Maynard, I would like to become a part of this ministry. I want to grow and develop in the things of God. But also, with my growth, I want to help others grow. If you feel you want to be a part of this ministry, come from where you are. Come down to where I am and let God have his way with you in your life and your continued journey through this life. Come on, from where you are, just come to where I am. Listen while you still can hear, yes. The master's calling. Not Jerry Maynard, but the master's calling. Ooh. Oh, yes. The master's calling. Guide me. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much. God bless you all. We appreciate it. If you look to your right, if you look to your right, you see our youth department in the risers. Come on, praise God for the youth. <laughs> With the exception of two people, one, I th wait a minute, I better look again. Let me see who's up here. With the exception of two people, one is the pastor of our youth ministries and also uh, Sister um, Harrison is that there. We know. She may tell me, Bishop, I'm one of the youth, but I see her hiding behind that one young lady. With the, yeah, but we, we appreciate them uh, working with our youth on Sunday and teaching and training because we intend to have youth who are involved and move on from this time of their life into that next uh, period of time. God bless you. We've heard the announcements. Let's be uh, govern ourselves with regard to them. And again, family members, take your fathers out. And let them have a good dinner. Amen. Don't take them to where you usually take them. Burger King is not an option. <laughs> McDonald's is not an option. Take them, take them some other place. We have a young man who came in here. His name is Tay, I believe. And uh, he is going to be baptized at this moment.
Well, praise God. We had two, but I think we're going to end up with one. Just one. Yeah. Thank you so much. Did you, were you saying you needed prayer? Is that what you said? Praise God. We always have time for prayer. Can you say something? May you say something? Yes, you may. I just got out of the hospital yesterday. Mm. My daughter contracted viral meningitis, and they thought that it was bacterial meningitis. And of course, by me being with her, I got some of it myself. Mm. So I was just dismissed yesterday at 3 o'clock out of St. Thomas Hospital, and I'm weak. I'm very weak. And I just need the prayers of the righteous ones. And I need the prayer of Bishop. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for your presence. We thank you for you, the God that heals. You're the God that delivers. And you are the God that works miracles. Lord, you brought her out of the hospital, and she's asked for prayer. In the name of Jesus, we touch her and lay hands upon her. And he said if we did, that she would be healed. They said lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. In the name of Jesus, you are healed. You are delivered and you are free. No virus, no bacteria, nothing in your system that ought not be. And then God, we speak that she's no longer weak, but that she's strong in you, physically and mentally. It's in your name. And we give you praise and give you glory and give you honor, and we thank you now. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Amen. Amen. Bless you. You walk out of here with strength. Walk out of here with strength. Hey, Kaboshe. Walk out of here with strength. Hallelujah. Walk out of here with strength. Right now, anybody else in here who is not well in your body, I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, Tell them to say, I am healed. If you're, if, if, you're, if you're not healed, if you're not delivered, if you have a problem right now, you declare unto yourself through the power of God in the name of Jesus, I am healed. Amen.